as you can tell from my story, um, I've I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. And there was a lot of periods where I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. But you just keep going. Um, it's very normal to make mistakes. I think the most important thing is to just stay focused on your goal and never give up and keep trying. And as long as you don't give up, you will get there one day. I have made many, many mistakes over the past six and a half years, but we're here today. And um, overall, our company is doing great. And I'm very proud of where we're at. And it's just because we we never gave up. We've made a lot of mistakes, but we ultimately just kept going. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm your host, Jay Connor. This is the show where we talk about how to raise private money without ever having to ask for money. Well, my guest today, in fact, I was on her podcast not too long ago and had an amazing experience with her. She has raised to date uh, seven about $700,000 in private money for her real estate deals and has got even more coming. But talk about a success story in such a short period of time. She has already flipped over 100 houses. This year, she's on track, $3 million in revenue. And also in a short period of time, she's got over 50 property uh, rentals in her portfolio. And she co-founded and grew a property management firm from zero properties to over 600 properties that she and her team manages in less than three years. Well, my guest is going to pull the curtain back, talk about her success, talk about how she has accomplished all this in such a short period of time. She's going to talk about how she's raised private money. And she's also going to talk about how you can be a totally passive real estate investor by being a private lender with her. In just a moment, you're going to meet my amazing guest, Mara McGraw, right after this. Well, hey there, Mara, and welcome to the show. Hi, Jay. I'm so, so happy to be here today. I'm so happy to have you as well, and I had the best time on your podcast not too long ago. And I remember being on your show. I said, my lands, I need to have Mara McGraw on my show. But since we're talking about your show for a second, Laura, uh, Mara, tell them about your show. Okay. I host the Mastering Real Estate Podcast, and I bring in lots of different types of experts like Jay to talk about different aspects of real estate investing. We go all over the place, not just private money, but we do, we've talked about land banking, all sorts of creative finance, house flipping, you name it. We talk to all different types of experts. And then sometimes I'll jump on the mic and give my own two cents about some lessons I've learned from being in the trenches. What year did you start investing in real estate, Mara? In 2018. So it's been a little over six and a half years so far. All right. So when you started in 2018, what type of real estate deals did you start doing? Okay. This is crazy, but, um, I started on a ground up build. Woo. Yes. Okay. And what kind of property? <laughs> so my, so let me rewind a second. So my, I learned about real estate investing from my father and stepmother who are real estate investors on a much higher level than me. And so my father is a mentor to me, but he's not like a, a hold your hand and let me explain how things work type of guy. He's a throw you into the fire type of guy. So when I decided that I wanted to start my own company, he's like, okay, you can go down and manage this project for me. I have a piece of land down in Birmingham, Alabama. You need to go there and, and build a house. I, at the time, knew nothing about building a house. I um, 
did not know anybody in Birmingham, Alabama. And I just had to go there, figure it out, meet some people, raise some money and figure out how to build this house from the ground up. And it was extremely difficult. I made every mistake in the book. We ended up losing $30,000 on that first project. It was a trial, a true trial by fire. Um, but I certainly did learn a ton that then set me up to have some success later on. But that, that was my first project, a ground up build, a single family house. Um, I think it was a four bedroom, two and a half bath house in Pleasant Grove, Alabama. Oh, wow. What a story. So what was it that happened in your business that caused you to start raising private money? Well, as many of your guests have said, especially when you're starting, no banks want to finance you as a untested startup real estate entrepreneur. Nobody wants to lend you any money because you have no track record, no credit. So like many of your guests that you've had on before, I ha really had no choice but to figure out how to raise private money for my first deal. So um, the two flips that I did after that initial ground up build, I couldn't get a bank to finance me. I was not super pumped about doing hard money because of how much they charge you. So I decided that I would just go try my hand at raising private money. And I really had no idea what I was doing at the time. But I had another kind of coach mentor that told me, <laughs> you know, if the deal's good enough, the money will come. And, and I got some good deals. They were great when I was doing my little pro forma analysis. And then I had to go find the money. And it was very stressful. But I ended up doing it. And I, I think I brought the deal to probably 10 different investors, presented it. And finally, I found the right person and he saw the deal and he knew the area. And he's like, I think this is a good deal. I'll go in on it with you. Um, basically, what we did is he funded the purchase price. I funded the construction and we split the profits 50-50. And that was my first foray into raising private money. Um, how I'm saying it now, it sounds super simple. At the time, it was super stressful because... I uh, had a really short deadline to try to find this money and raise it. But that was my first ever experience raising private money. So you were under the gun. And I tell you, these people <laughs> going around, I think we probably talked about it on your podcast. Well, these people going around saying, just get the deal in the contract. The money will show up. And I want to say, where? Where in the money is, is, is the, where in the world is the money going to show up? Is it just going to like rain out of clouds or whatever? And that's why I practice and preach the money comes first, get the money lined up first. However, I'd like for you to share your experience in detail here uh, with our audience. I'm sure we have some people listening or watching that have had your experience. They got a deal in the contract. They don't have the funding. Now they got to go find the funding or they're going to lose the deal. So I think you said you presented that deal to 10 different people. Uh, perspective of private lenders. And by the way, as I started out the show, I said, you know, this podcast is about how do you raise private money without asking for it? Well, the answer to that question is it's all about education, teaching people what private money is. I've got 47 private lenders now that are funding our deals. Not one of them had ever heard of private money or private lending until I put on my teacher hat and I told them what private money was and how they can use self-directed or their retirement funds uh, to get high rates of return safely and securely. So anyway, back to the question, Mara, you got this deal under contract. Now you got to go find private lenders. How did you go about that? And how did you find them? Oh my gosh. It was a whirlwind. Um, it just so happens that that week, I had about a week to find the money for these two deals. And I happened to it was one of the craziest weeks of my life. I was um, finishing, I was in my graduate school for real estate and I was competing in this really nerdy real estate case competition. Um, and we 
my team made it to the finals and let's and we ended up winning which was cool but i was had to fly to san francisco to do this and at the same time try to find money so luckily i the, it just so happened that the case competition finals were in san francisco and i am originally from the bay area in san francisco so i had a little network so i i realized that i need to fund this deal i'm on a plane to san francisco and i'm like just looking through my phone book, who do I know that might be interested in this? So on the plane, I just scheduled a few appointments. I hit the, I hit the the runway. I get off the plane. And before we go into like, you know, the, you know, finalist pre presentation, I have two quick meetings at coffee shops with um, people that I had met through, you know, my network, whatever real estate, I just met with them, told them about the deal. They were nice enough to take the meeting, but ultimately they weren't interested. Um, that was, and I just kind of cobbled together these random meetings. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I needed to try something. And it was all amidst this crazy case competition. So probably that weekend in between these rounds of competition, I probably did about five different meetings. Um, and everyone was nice, but in the end, no one was interested because I, it was the same problem as the banks. I was kind of a new, barely tested person and they just weren't that interested. Um, so then finally we found the money because my general contractor knew a guy in Birmingham and he said, I know this guy has been interested in real estate for years, but he's just, you know, never pulled the trigger. Let me set up the meeting. So then I flew from San Francisco back to Birmingham and met with Aziz Shannara. And I did the same pitch to everyone, which is not really a good pitch, but I just kind of went through, presented the deal, went through the numbers. I'm like, here's my analysis. I'm very confident that we can do this. Luckily though, at the Birmingham meeting, I had my general contractor with me that was kind of like, yes, you know, this is the construction estimate. And, um, miraculously, Aziz agreed to fund the deal. And that was um, a miracle on several levels because Aziz would go on to be my business partner for the past six years because the deals went really well. He got really good returns. Um, and he's like, okay, this real estate thing works well and I want to be part of it. But it was, it was really stressful. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, call, <laughs> thought of everyone in my network that I could think of that had money that I knew was kind of interested in real estate, presented the deal, got probably eight or nine no's until I finally got a yes. And that was my haphazard strategy at the beginning. I want to extrapolate. <laughs> I want, I want to draw a conclusion. That's a very, very, that can be a very, very strong, valuable takeaway for our audience from your story. And that is for those of you that are watching or listening, and you want to raise private money. There's this, there's this thing I call the trust bridge, the trust bridge. Um, essentially what the trust bridge is, is it's a way of leveraging your relationship with someone else. And they are the bridge to get someone else to trust you. Even if the person on the other side of the bridge already knows you, but you have a relationship that you can leverage, that's the bridge, to where you want to go to leverage the ultimate or to use or to scale the ultimate relationship. So what am I talking about? Well, you ended up getting the money. You ended up getting the private money from an individual that, you already had a relationship with that being your general contractor and your general contractor brought that person to the table. Your general contractor was your trust bridge. And the person that had the money probably was putting perhaps even more trust in the general contractors, um, vouching for you than actually you yourself. And, and, and there's another big takeaway. There, there's another big takeaway. And, and that was, who do I know that knows somebody else? Who, that's a writer downer right there. Mm -hmm. Who do I know that knows somebody else? Now, let me flesh that out for a second. And 
then I'll come back to you, Mara. So when I raised my very first private money, it was $250,000. I, I didn't call it a trust bridge at the time, but I leveraged a relationship that I currently had and I asked them for help. So one of the quickest ways that I raise private, that I have raised private money very easily without asking for money is I ask people that I know for help. So my, so the, my very first person I approached was after Bible class on a, I mean, uh, at Bible class on a Wednesday night at church, his name was Wayne. He's passed away now, but anyway, I told him I'd like to visit with him confidentially. We got together after Bible class and, ex and here's exactly what I said to him, which utilizes the trust bridge. And that is, I said to Wayne, I said, Wayne, I need your help. And that's the magic phrase right there. I need your help. I said, Wayne, I've now opened up my real estate investing business by referral only to people I know and trust. I'm paying insane high rates of return to my private lenders and investors. And Wayne, when you run across somebody that is complaining about the low rates at the local banks or the volatility of the stock market, Will you refer them to me? I'll tell them about my program. Of course, Wayne wanted to know about the program himself. And he and his wife actually became my first private lender at $250,000. And within 24 hours, that became $500,000 by me simply asking them for help. So that's the trust bridge. So back to you, Mara. Did I analyze and conclude correctly your story? Yes. Brilliant. And I think how you put it is so succinct. Um, I could not have said it better myself. Well, I appreciate you sharing the story because your story evokes myself and all of our audience asking the question, who do I know that is a center of influence, right? Who do I know in my community, in my area that, you know, like knows, you know, knows a lot of people. So you've raised the private money. And now I want to change subjects. Just by the way, if you're listening or watching this show and you're interested in doing business with a person that I can vouch, I, I can be the trust bridge. I can be the trust bridge for Mara. You're interested in doing business with Mara. In fact, in case somebody's got to jump off early, Mara, I want to go ahead and give out your contact information as to how people can get a hold of you. And I know you also have um, uh, an academy as well. Take a minute and talk about that. Awesome. Yes. Well, if you would love to invest with me, probably the easiest way is to reach out to me via email. My email is mora at doratusproperties.com and you can see it on the screen. And um, we do flips, we do long-term holds, and we have a rent to own program. And so if you would like to be part of any of those, we would love to have you. So just reach out to me. You can also check out our website, doratusproperties.com. You can get a lot more information about how to invest with us. And we have some forms you can fill out there. And yes, we do have an academy. We have our Doratus Academy, which walks you through how to get started in real estate investing yourself. So if you are interested in real estate investing, you're wondering, how do I get started? Um, I had so many people ask me this question over the years that I went back and I thought, okay, if I could start again from square one, how would I do it? And so I built a course of exactly what I would do if I had to start again today from square one and avoid some of the big pitfalls that I faced along the way. One of which is how to find and fun fund your deals, how to find private money. Now, I can't say that I'm as much of an expert as Jay. I learned my own little lessons, but again, if you want to know from the real private money expert, you're already in the right place on this podcast. <laughs> All right. So I, I want to repeat those. So uh, your email address, if someone's interested in getting high rates of return safely and securely, Mara's email address. And of course, all this will be in the show notes. Uh, but for those of you that are listening right now, her email is Mara, M-A-U-R-A, at Doratus Properties. Now, Doratus is spelled D-U-R-A-T-U-S, DoratusProperties.com. And then she's got the Academy, DoratusAcademy.com. And then there was one more URL that you gave out that I want to repeat. And I got DoratusProperties.com. I've got the email. And then we've got the uh, Academy. So super. Now, one last question, Mara. Uh, and this is very, very important. 
you have a trend in your career <laughs> in your and you're and you're pretty young by the way but anyway in your career so far you've accomplished a lot you flipped over a hundred houses uh you've got over 50 property rentals in your portfolio and you've got a property management firm that's got over 600 units and you did that in three years so here's the big question how do you scale your businesses so quickly and not go out of business oh that is such a great question well let me just say that the property management company is an example of scaling too quickly and this is something that i didn't believe until it happened to me um that you can grow too quickly and you can scale too quickly um but we started the property management company in 2019 out of a pure need myself and my two business partners we just needed a really good property management company that looked out for the investors and their returns uh, of course the tenants as well but our our whole thing was to start a property management company by investors for investors and it was so needed in our community that it grew like a wildfire. I mean, we did no paid advertising. I think we were just, all three of us were already in the real estate investor circles and it was such a needed service. It really, really took off quickly. And it, at several points, we had to consciously just halt and stop because it, we basically from zero, about zero to 150, we were just like, we didn't, you know, holding it together, doing our best. But then at 150, we probably had to implement some systems, hire some more people. Then from 150 to 300 um, was another big growth period. At 300, we really had to stop. We, it was, things were getting a little out of control. We had to stop. We did, couldn't take any new clients for um, one or two quarters. And we had to revamp all our systems and get ready for the next big growth period, which was the three to 600. And that was the craziest time the last um from you know four to six hundred that was where things <laughs> kind of went crazy um we took on some apartment complexes and um from there we actually had to part ways with certain owners and scale back and decide okay we need to become way more selective as a property management company and really target a certain type of customer, a certain type of property to grow a lot more intentionally. So yes, we grew extremely quickly. And um, I think it's just because we were providing a extremely needed service. Any of anyone who's an investor out there knows finding a good property manager is really hard. So we just tried to do a, a really good job and serve a market where it was very needed. Um, and now that company is very, very picky about who it takes. So after I had my second child, I actually exited my partner, Danny. He still runs it. The company is doing amazing. I did exit out of that because I was doing a little too much. Um, but now he's a lot more intentional with how he grows it. He, we're not just focused on growth anymore. Um, you have to be interviewed as an owner and you have to have a certain type of property to be accepted. Um, and how I grew the, the other ones were a lot more gradual. The, the property management company really, really grew extremely quickly uh, and arguably too quickly. The other ones have been, it's been a core, it's over six years. So yes, it sounds nice to say I've flipped over a hundred houses, but if you spread that out over six and a half years, it's a pretty, manageable number per year. Um, we try to hit between 10 and 20 a year. And for us now with our, we have a little team of seven, that's pretty manageable and, uh, and acquiring 50 rental properties over six and a half years is also fairly manageable. Um, we have one portfolio, two portfolio acquisitions in there where we picked up a, a good handful at a couple of times. So those ones I think are a much better example of scaling just consistently over time. It certainly wasn't overnight. It took six and a half years to get 
to where it's at. So um, that's a very long answer to your short question. No, that's good. Now, did you just say you got seven team members? Seven, seven. Okay. Well, tell us about your team members. Uh, what, what are their responsibilities? Okay. So most importantly, my partner, Aziz Shinara, who I talked about at the beginning, who is our initial uh, private money lender. He is my business partner in all of this now. He really wears the CFO hat. Um, and then under him, we have a general manager, Julie, who is amazing. We have a construction manager who helps oversee all of our flips and construction across our portfolio. We have a bookkeeper, um, two executive assistants, and a property manager. We manage now that I left. Now that I left the property management company, we do manage all of our own properties in house, and that's our team. I love it. I love it. And with that, Mara, uh, let me give you the opportunity to share any. Uh, advice or parting words uh, before we wrap it up? So as you can tell from my story, um, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. And there was a lot of periods where I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, but you just keep going. Um, it's very normal to make mistakes. I think the most important thing is to just stay focused on your goal and never give up and keep trying. As long as you don't give up, you will get there one day. I have made many, many mistakes over the past six and a half years, but we're here today. And um, overall, our company is doing great. I'm very proud of where we're at. And it's just because we, we never gave up. We've made a lot of mistakes, but we ultimately just kept going. I think that's the most important thing. I love it, Mara. And, um, my parting advice would be if, if you're starting out and you want to be a real estate investor, for goodness sakes, don't make the biggest mistake I made. And that was, I was in this business for six years before I got my first real estate investing coach to, <laughs> to actually work with me. Right. So anyway, yeah. Mara, thank you so much for joining me on the show. All of y'all be sure and check out, um, Mara's contact, her, her, her connections that she's got that we have there in the show notes, um, Mara at DoratusProperties.com, DoratusProperties.com, and, um, and, and all the great information she's given. Mara, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Jay. It was so, so great to see you. Thank you for having me. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. And I really appreciate your feedback. If you found this valuable, be sure and share this with a friend of yours that you think would also benefit. If you are listening on iTunes or Spotify or any of the other big platforms, be sure to follow. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click that bell. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.